Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video with me, Oofle Spoofle, and in today's video we are going to be recreating the brand new Neutron rocket which has just been announced by Rocket Lab. So for those of you that don't know, Rocket Lab is an American uh, rocket manufacturing company that's based in New Zealand and so far they've done one orbital rocket uh, which is called the Electron which is quite a small rocket, it can get about I think three or four hundred kilograms to low Earth orbit. And it's a very, it's a very cool rocket, if you ask me. It's, it's really nice and modern and, you know, definitely filling a bit of a gap in the market when it comes to small sat launches. But, um, in fact, yesterday, uh, at the time of recording this, they have announced a new rocket that they're working on called Neutron. And, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, they're moving away from their small sat launches and they're finally going for a bigger rocket. And, uh, so to get, to put it into perspective, this is actually, um, going to be shorter than Falcon 9 but actually uh, have a wider diameter and uh, you know we don't know much about it at this point but we do know we do have a few images and we know that it's going to have a low earth orbit payload capacity of eight tons and then a you know interestingly they have also included a 1.5 ton payload capacity to Venus so that kind of suggests that this might be used for interplanetary missions um, so that's kind of what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm going to be sending a 1.5 ton probe to the surface of EVE. Because, you know, I thought, why not? That's a nice, interesting payload. So, um, you, you can probably notice it has a nice silver sort of look to it. A bit like, I guess, Starship, if you, if you want to compare it to that. But I don't think this is really anything like Starship. But, um, you know, I don't know if this is actually stainless steel like Starship. It might be aluminium for all we know. I mean, I, yeah, we really don't know much about it at this point. We just know, you know, we, we do know the dimensions as well. So, um, this isn't a one-to-one -one scale replica. This is a, this is close enough to a two-thirds scale. Uh, it's going to be four, four meters in diameter and about 30-something meters tall. Maybe like 35. I, I should honestly have remembered this considering I'm making a replica, but, oh well. I think I've got the proportions almost right here. Um... And yeah, it does have a black interstage. I wasn't really perfectly able to create, uh, you know, recreate that, but I think that fairing texture is about as close as you can get to, you know, a black interstage. Um, now, <laughs> I probably haven't addressed the elephant in the room here, uh, which is those big landing legs. And yeah, I've managed to waffle through that entire build time lapse. But yeah, here we go, uh, launching this. I've used five swivel engines. I wasn't even sure how many engines this thing should have. Um, but by the looks of the pictures, it looks like it has four engines on the outside and maybe one in the middle. I've gone ahead and assumed that there's one in the middle as well. So that makes a total of five engines. But I haven't even mentioned that this thing is going to be uh, recoverable, at least for the first stage. A bit like the Falcon 9. Um, so you might have noticed in the build time maps, I included some big landing gear on the first stage. And um, yeah, they the landing gear do look very, very similar to uh, those of the Falcon 9. So... I mean, I wouldn't say they're copying it, they're just, you know, I mean, if something works, why not do it again, you know? Um, so, we have seen an animation, it's not an official one, but I'm going to go ahead and assume, I mean, we don't know how accurate it is, but it shows a drone ship landing, and that would make a lot of sense, considering, you know, it's not the biggest launch vehicle, vehicle ever, and there's probably not enough margin for a, uh, you know, return to launch site uh, landing, but here we go, firing up those engines again. And, uh, yeah, they're coming up for landing. I'll just slow down the footage here. And interestingly enough, there's no control, you know, like aerodynamic, you know, fins or anything at the top. It's, I think it's going to have to rely completely on, um, you know, rea reaction control system to keep it stable through the entry. But there we go. We've landed the booster and we can switch over to our second stage. And, um, yeah, I think that I have made this second stage a little bit too big, um, for this, but yeah, I mean, the... The proportions aren't perfect, but I think I've got it close enough. So again, we really don't have very much information about this. So I've kind of gone ahead and made some assumptions. I've, yeah, we don't know how many engines are on this second stage. You know, considering the Electron has one, and a lot of upper stages have either one or two engines. I'm, I went ahead and you know went with one, also because you know two engines is kind of overkill considering how small this rocket is. Uh, well, at least this recreation. Um, the actual thing isn't really, you know, you can't really consider it small. It's it's quite a big rocket as things go. Um, but yeah, here we go, finishing our circularization. And then after that, we can go ahead and plot our course to EVE. 
Um, so yeah, I got really unlucky with this transfer window. You can't really see what I'm doing right here, but um, yeah, I didn't do it very efficiently and I didn't get onto a equatorial orbit around EVE, which wasn't really, you know, what I want. I didn't really need that in the first place. I just kind of wanted to land anywhere. Um, but here we go doing our escape burn from Kerbin. And I also had to do another correction burn at the edge of, of EVE's sphere of influence, which I'm going to plot in just a second here. Uh, any moment now once, I, once I've actually finished this burn. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really excited for this rocket because, you know, so far, you know, I think Electron has, I, I honestly don't know how many launches Electron has done, but it's done a fair amount of successful launches. It's proved its reliability. And they're even, um, you know, starting to recover the first stages using parachutes. So I'm honestly really excited to see what they're going to do for Neutron. Um, I mean, yeah, it just it just looks really promising. They say they're going to hopefully, well, not hopefully, they, they say they will launch it um, in 2024. And, you know, it's Rocket Lab's motto, you know, if they say they're going to do something, they will do it. And, you know, Rocket Lab has been pretty uh, reliable in the past. Um, so, yeah, here we go doing our first aero break into EVE's atmosphere. I, de I decided to split this entry over several passes because, uh, yeah, this heat shield can't really handle a direct entry. Not many things can handle a direct entry into EVE. So, yeah, that's why we're doing that. And... Uh, for those wondering, we are powered by an RTG inside that sort of shield thing. Uh, yeah, we have a couple RTGs just keeping this thing powered. But I believe this is the final pass into EVE's atmosphere. And uh, we can go ahead and land this thing. It's quite a basic lander. We, you know, I was confined to 1.5 tons for the entire, you know, payload, including all of the heat shield and stuff. So you couldn't really fit too much on the lander. But here we go. We've revealed the lander and... Yeah, all we've really got was a few experiments, you know, some landing gear and a antenna. And this is a really unlucky landing site. Like we're literally landing on a cliff. I mean, can we stick the landing? Let's see. Um, below 50 meters here coming down at a nice slow speed. Um, so I don't think the impact is going to cause any problems. But, you know, we are on a very steep slope here. So, you know, coming in for the final approach. Here we go. Touching down. And by some stroke of luck, I didn't fall over here. I could have just left it like this, but, um, well, you're, you're about to see in a moment. So I guess we can extend the solar panels and the antenna and stuff. And I guess this thing has no real purpose since this is a sandbox save. I just kind of wanted to demonstrate, you know, the neutron rocket or my recreation of it. And yeah, I decided I managed to mess this up by switching my SAS thing. And no, I've broken the solar panels as well. But uh, oh well, <laughs> such is life. Um, yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. So if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all of that good generic YouTube stuff. Uh, link to my Discord is in the description if you want to join that. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.